The energy economy paradigm frequently asks questions. Professor Tim Garrett's theory of economic growth, a concept that challenges conventional wisdom and offers new insights into the relationship between energy consumption, wealth, and sustainability. Let's address some common questions and concerns that arise when discussing this groundbreaking theory. Do you conclude that global energy consumption and global GDP have been practically perfectly coupled in the past? No, they are not perfectly coupled. Instead, what's coupled is global energy consumption and the summation of inflation-adjusted world GDP since the dawn of civilization. Can we have a steady state economy? In general, no. Our economy is constantly evolving, driven by discovery, depletion, extraction, and utilization of energy and resources. Can we meet a 2 degrees Celsius warming target and maintain a healthy economy? It's highly challenging. Sustained economic production requires increasing energy consumption, which in a fossil fuel-based economy is at odds with efforts to reduce carbon emissions. Evidence shows that Javon's paradox is wrong. Rebound effects that counteract efficiency gains are small. Studies are unable to track the full broader impacts of efficiency gains on the global economy, leading to a misunderstanding of their true effect. GDP numbers are unreliable. They should not be used to calculate any relationship between wealth and energy. While GDP numbers have their limitations, they still provide valuable insights into the relationship between economic activity and consumption of energy and raw materials. Isn't population growth the fundamental driver of increasing energy consumption? Population growth is more of a symptom than a driver. It's our increasing energy consumption that enables sustained economic growth and population expansion. Energy is not value. A country like Switzerland has no energy resources of its own at all, but its currency is strong. While Switzerland may lack energy resources, it still relies on energy consumption, albeit indirectly through its interconnectedness with the global economy. Energy is just one factor of production among many, including labor and capital. This argument neglects the fundamental role of potential energy dissipation in all universal processes. Energy isn't just one factor among many. It's the driving force behind all actions. People can't sustain themselves or engage in labor without it. Physical capital loses its significance without energy to facilitate the flow of resources like people, raw materials, and information. Simplifying, focusing solely on energy reveals its pivotal role in driving processes. In conclusion, Professor Garrett's theory offers a fresh perspective on economic growth, reminding us of the intricate relationship between energy, wealth, and sustainability in our ever-evolving world.